Hey kitchen people, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Alyssa. I'm so glad you're here. I'm the owner and creator of the Floral Apron blog. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make candied orange slices, which are just thinly sliced pieces of orange that are cooked in a sugar syrup. There's nothing like them. They're super easy. It takes three ingredients and maybe half an hour of active time, along with a 24 hour drying period, and then you can eat them to your heart's content. So easy, so delicious. Let's get started. We are gonna blanch these orange slices and then we're gonna cook them in a sugar syrup. So in order for things to go smoothly in a streamlined process, I have a bowl of ice water set up and I have my water boiling behind me. All I need to do now is slice my oranges thinly and then I can start with the rest of the recipe. When you're slicing your oranges, you wanna be careful not to go too thick or too thin. If you go too thick, it'll take a little while longer to dry, maybe up to two days. If you go a little bit too thin, they won't hold together in the boiling water and they'll start to pull apart so that you don't have one consistent round. It'll be more of like a sunburst and they, they're they a lot harder to manage if they fall apart. So I keep mine in between 1 8 and 1 4 of an inch. If you have a mandolin, you can use that, but I have gotten away making this recipe multiple times just with a sharp knife. I start off by cutting the end. Then I figure out how far in I want and I start slicing. This one is probably a little bit too thin on one side, but the other side is thick enough. This is about as thin as you want to go. You've got super thin on this side and a little bit thicker on this side. So this one will probably hold together when it's boiling, but I wouldn't go any thinner than this. Then just set them in a pile on your cutting board and continue cutting the rest of the oranges. And then once I get to this point where it's getting a little bit difficult for me to cut without worrying about the knife slipping and cutting my fingers, I just put this aside and I use it for orange juice later. I move on to the next one. If you have a mandolin, you could get away using only four oranges. Because I leave this part off, I recommend using five just to get the final amount of four in the end. My husband and I are huge fans of these orange slices, so whenever we're trying to figure out what we want to do for dinner, we'll pull out the container from the fridge, we'll just start snacking on them, and by the time we've figured out dinner, like, the, we've eaten too many oranges, but they're so good, you know? And if you get towards the end and you want to make one more cut, it helps if you're using oranges that are a little bit older because you can dig your nails into the skin and hold on to it a little bit better that way. For the absolute best flavor and texture, we are going to blanch these first. If you just put it directly into a hot sugar syrup and cooked it, there would be a lot more bitterness from the white pith of the orange and the texture would be a little bit more chewy in an unpleasant way. Blanching this, make sure that you soften the texture and get rid of any extra bitterness so you are just left with a perfect candied orange. Let's get blanching. <laughs> Once all the orange slices are in, set a timer for two minutes. Sometimes you can get a particularly large stack of oranges and the ones on top won't cook quite as much as the ones on the bottom, so I like to flip them every few seconds just to make sure that there's an even cook. In the time that it has taken me to prepare, the ice is melted, but I promise it is cold water in the bowl behind me. Now that my oranges have been in for two minutes, I'm gonna take them out and put them in the ice cold water. The oranges are going to be more fragile than when they went in, that's what we want, but just be a little bit more careful when you're handling them so that they don't break open. Once you've removed all of your oranges, you wanna drain that water, it is bitter. That's why we are not cooking it directly in the sugar syrup. So drain that water and then refill it with four cups of sugar and four cups of water to make a simple syrup. You don't need to rinse your pot, just make sure that you get all the water out. I like to start with the sugar just so that it starts off hotter, I don't know. There's really no set order, but I like to start with the sugar just because I feel like that'll melt better. It doesn't matter.
give your pot a stir every so often just to make sure that the sugar and water have combined and are melting evenly. While you're waiting for your sugar syrup to boil, it is a great time to get your drying racks ready to go. I made these candied orange slices yesterday so that you could see the final product after they have dried for 24 hours, but I only have three drying racks. These are my three drying racks. So I'm gonna remove them off of the drying racks. These are what we'll be using later in the video, but I need something to dry the current orange slices on. A couple things you're looking for and to keep in mind when you're candying these oranges, they're really only gonna stay in that sugar syrup for about two minutes until the rind gets a little bit translucent. You can kind of move them around while they're in there to make sure that they cook evenly, but take them out one by one and lay them on drying racks. When you take the oranges out, I have found that if you drag them along the side of the pot, it helps get a lot of that sugar syrup off so that it doesn't drip onto the parchment paper or your baking sheet. It just makes cleanup a lot easier. I personally like to put parchment paper underneath the drying rack so that it catches any sort of sugar syrup that falls off. After the first hour, you're not really at risk of dripping anymore, so I would recommend moving them to a higher ventilation spot or putting a fan on them just so that they dry a little bit faster. You don't have to use parchment paper, you could use a baking pan, but that requires more dishes and I prefer to not have more dishes. So parchment paper is best for me. You can also use aluminum foil, anything really works. I don't know, I wouldn't recommend a dish towel unless you're ready for that to be probably sticky forever. So in an ideal situation, I would have put this on the countertop, but it's, I don't wanna drip sugar syrup on the floor over to the island. So I have put parchment paper directly over the burner. I'm not turning that on anytime soon. It's not a fire risk, I promise. And just like when we were blanching, feel free to move them around the pot as you see fit to make sure that they cook evenly. As you can imagine, the thicker ones take more time and the thinner ones take less time. So just keep moving them around and while you move them around the pot, check to see the translucents. Once some start looking translucent, you can take them out one by one and layering them in a single layer on your drying racks. As I promised, no more fire hazard. I always like to let the pot cool for quite a while because it's hot, it has hot sugar syrup in there. If you're into cocktails or mixing drinks, that is a really good orange flavored simple syrup. You can also put it in iced tea to sweeten it with a little bit of orange flavor. It's absolutely delicious. There's also a lot of it, so you don't have to save all of it. I usually save about eight ounces and then throw the rest away. I have my orange slices here, the bowl that I had the sugar in earlier here, and my plate here. I'm gonna fill this bowl with half a cup to a full cup. It really depends on how large your oranges are, how many you have, how thinly they were sliced. I just keep the sugar nearby in case I need extra, and then you just dip. I flip them to make sure they get fully coated, and then these are ready to eat. This dip is optional, but they just look so beautiful afterwards that I don't know why you wouldn't want to do it. Dipping them also prevents them from sticking together quite as much, so that's also an added benefit of dipping them. So yummy. I want to rate this a one out of five on my cleanup scale, but I'm pretty sure it's a two just because of the excess of drying racks and the amount of cleaning that it takes to get that sugar syrup off. However, it is low cleanup compared to a lot of other bakes and I am not spending half an hour doing dishes at the end of it. 
everything together really only takes me a couple of minutes to wash and that is why this is one of my absolute favorite recipes. I'm really excited to taste these but my kettle is cooled down and I want to wash these dishes first so that I don't have to worry about anything afterwards. So let me wash these dishes and then I'll show you how good these are. If you are a current subscriber or you heard about me from a friend or you're just here because the algorithm told you to be here, I'm really glad you're here. Thank you so much for sticking around. I post videos on YouTube about once a month, but if you wanna hear from me more frequently than that, you are welcome to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I love interacting with all of my followers. I mean, a lot of them are my friends, so I would love to have you over there too. The ones that have broken open are my personal favorite to eat, but the ones that have not broken open are my personal favorite for decorating. I put them on top of chocolate orange cupcakes, of which the recipe is coming shortly to the blog, and they are just absolutely divine. So here we go. They pull right apart. I can actually tell the difference between homegrown and store-bought oranges because these were homegrown from one of my friend's trees. That's why these ones have leaves. Thank you, Esther. <laughs> but these have a much stronger orange flavor. Ooh. Mmm. 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 These are so good. I feel like I have sugar on my face now. Mmm. <laughs> Homemade candied orange slices should be kept in the refrigerator in a sealed container. They'll stay good for about a month, maybe more. I have had mine in the fridge for two and a half weeks at this point and they still taste like I made them yesterday. They're so good. They are almost out, so I'm glad I can refill them. Oh. Mmm. I'm gonna take this one too. Thank you so much for watching this video. All of your support helps me, whether that's likes or subscribes, comments, views, sharing with all of your friends and then some. I have the full recipe for candied orange slices on my blog at floralapron.com. I've linked it in the description and you can be just about as happy as I am in a day and a half when you make these in your home. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.